call the meeting to audit. We're at 507. So is it, uh, anybody have any changes to the uh, minutes last meeting? No, uh, just, just what Tom changed in the, on the top. Okay. So, so I'll make a motion to accept as amended. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 What, what are we going to do about signing the bills? We're going to swing by and, and do that for they're all set um, and ready on the shelf. If I'll be in tomorrow at eight, or if, if I'll be there tomorrow on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna. What's the next thing on the agenda there, Kerry? I can't see it. Uh, discussion regarding apartments on West Center Street in the Aquifer Protection. Tom added that. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't know if, did we get a set of plans for that project, Wayne? Uh, yeah, a while back, a long time ago. 477 West Center Street. Did we look at that? Have we discussed it? I don't think we discussed it. I, I think we looked at it, but I'm not sure if they, I'd have to look back through and see if they were just conceptuals or it was the actual. Okay. Well, one of the issues, uh, that the ZBA wants to clarify is whether this project is in zone two or not. And I guess the line is right there on Friend Street or maybe over, or I guess there's no definitive line. Do you know how that works? Uh, well, there's, there's a definitive line. We just have to go into the map, the official map on the zone twos. Okay. Um, I think it's, I think it is in the zone two because I think I would get down 106 and then it goes down Crescent Street. So it would just barely be in it. Is it what, what they do is they take the um, the um, what they figure is the real zone two, and then they go to a, a street that is next out to that circle, so that there's a definitive line that somebody can follow, so it doesn't run through somebody's backyard or through a field or something like that. You know. Okay. So, so um, I don't think the actual zone two goes through the building or anything like that. I think it's around the church somewhere, you know, it, it, the circle, but that they fall I guess the streets. That's one of the issues. And I just figured I'd present it. And I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to see more. if I can pull that map up right now, but it's not being real happy okay. with me for some reason. And the other thing, I, what what size main is out in the street there, uh, oh, West Center Street in front of that? I believe project. that's a six. Yeah, I think it is. It's a six right on that side, but it hasn't got a lot of water on it. All right. I, I, anytime I, they've asked, I've always told them that that's a concern that they may not have enough water there. Right. For fire protection. Yep. Um, They're really going forward with that, huh? Well, they're presenting it. I don't, I don't know where it's going to go, but the first thing we really need to figure out is if it's in zone two, because if it is, it, it's, it's, uh, they're not going to be able to do it. I don't think they can do what they want there with the number of bedrooms and the, the amount of square feet on the lot. Right, at yeah. Well, the, for, the from the sewer order. side, they just have to put in a, um, a treatment system. I mean, zone two, as far as that, what it affects is your nitrogen how much nitrogen you can put into the site. So they just have to put in a nitrogen removal system. Okay. I mean, it's if, a small if, lot and they're talking like 20. Oh, I know it. It's, it's a tiny lot compared to, let's see if I can't find this thing here. Why how about drainage? It? Does it affect anything on the drainage side? Being in the zone two? Yeah. Uh, nothing that would affect them. Okay. Because they're just going to have normal parking type stuff. West Bridgewater. Let's see if it'll give me the street address. And any other concerns we might have with that project? Okay, so if we zoom in. 
actually looks like the, well, now it went zoomed out too far. It looks like it's actually just outside the zone two, 477. What's it look like at Friend Street? I think last time I looked at Friend well, Street. Four, 477 is next to Honeydew. Friend. Honeydew. So Friend Street is outside, Church Street is inside. I'm sorry, say that again. It's like, all right, you know where Church Street comes down? The line kind of hits 106 in Church Street. Okay. And crosses High Street a little more than halfway towards Friend Street, the way the map is drawn. I build it on Crescent Street. Isn't that in it? Right at West and Crescent? Um, hang on. I thought my building was in it. No, Weston, uh, this is the, you know, the online version of the map. Weston Crescent is outside of the oh, zone two. Okay. Well, Not by much. This, the but lot that this project is on at, you would say, is outside the zone two? It's on the east side of Friend Street, right? Yes. Then it, according to this map, it's outside of zone two. Is Friend Street the line? No, the line's between Friend and Church. Oh, it is. Okay. Over there. So it doesn't even follow a road in this case. It, it goes right through those lots. No, th this is where their delineation is. Um, that, in fact, this is the DEP approved map, but we might have something a little different oh, yeah, no, but, help for the town. Yeah, see, that's the zone two. That's the zone two they accepted, but they have us do the aquifer protection zone. Yeah, that the regulations written around, and that goes by street. That's why I was saying, I think it goes our line that they made us put was down 106. We took a left on Crescent and around, so that it, that line was all encompassed inside that. Because what they don't want is having a half of a lot, you know, and say, okay, I I can do it on this side of the lot, but I can't do it on that side of the lot. The yeah, lots that works, I, out of it. I think that works with the aquifer protection bylaw, but I don't think it works with the Title V for the like for the nitrogen. Okay. Be, I, well, I can kind of go in. I remember looking at that once before and it got argued by somebody that it was and technically it's outside of the delineated zone too. So okay, but, we'll have to we'll have to keep it in mind and look at it. So uh, but it looks like it's out, you know, it's outside of that delineation. I don't have the hard copy town map to look at. I'd have to look at it at the Board of Health. If that's the case, Art, how would that affect this project? If which was the case, if it was, in, if it is inside? Well, if it's outside the DEP zone two, but inside the bylaw zone two. You know, I'd have to read exactly what our bylaw says. All right. I think it would affect the usages that they're allowed under the bylaw, but I don't think I'd have to check to see if we covered whether or not it falls under the nitrogen requirements. Okay. Don't know that off the top of my head. So we'd have to see how the bylaw, how it's affected by the bylaw this yeah. project. Well, well, first thing will be to check the town one because if if Rick's right about his building being in it, it sounds like it did go down Crescent Street and then it would be in the aquifer protection district. As far as the town's concerned, not what the, the town is concerned. But 40B only goes by state regs. So that it's a 40B. So would that mean they don't have to go by our I, I think I think it would not be covered, but I don't want to say for sure. Right, right. I, it's going to take some looking into to figure it out. Okay. Do we want to have our engineer look at it or how do we want to determine this? Let me do a little research and see what I can come up with. All right, I hate first. to give you more to do, but. Well, but the thing is it might turn into more of less the engineer and more like the attorneys looking at it. Right, to right. To really get into arguing the point. And they kind of don't want to get into it. They've kind of avoided it a little. And uh, so I think it might be a gray area. So we need to There's come up with There's a lot of gray things. areas around Title V and that stuff. Yeah, yeah. So. Where, where, uh, Tom, where would they put the septic system? Under the building? No, they got enough land there. We, we we were meeting by Zoom, so I didn't get to pick through the plans last meeting. But yeah, they they've got the room. I mean, I think there's going to be parking under the building. They're they're really uh, 
really system. putting 10 pounds of apples in a five pound bag. But... The, the septic <laughs> system is probably everything that isn't a building. I mean, like right. what you have over a- In drainage, in their stormwater management stuff. Yeah, it's like, like the old Charlie horse. Everything that isn't under that building is septic. septic or drainage. So I think that's the case here. So I guess the first thing we should, if we can try to figure out what the issue, if there's an issue with zone two. Yeah, well, let me, I'll double check on the, like I said, I'll get a hold of Rob Casper about where it stands on the town map. And I'll take back a look through the regs and All see right. what it says. If you could let me know our next meeting for ZBA is uh, I think it was up in the end. We hadn't picked the date, but it's at least a couple of weeks out. Well, I, can get, I can get the easy answer quick. It's just Okay. It might take more than just the easy answer to pin. You know, that could be in that gray area. Right, right. All right. If you can uh, let me know the easy answer, and then if it's not the easy answer, how we figure this out or what we how yep. we handle it. Uh, that's all I got on that issue, I guess. Water main, they can just, they'll have to figure out their fire suppression with it. That's all. Are they going to have a sprinkler system in there? Yeah. Yeah. They have to, right? Yep. How many stories was that going to be? Oh, I think at least three. I think it's four if you three. might be four. I think it's four if you include the parking. Yeah, but the parking's underground, isn't it? Yeah, technically. I'm thinking they may probably they'll not they'll need booster pumps. They might need a store. I, I think it is four stories, yeah. Yeah, if they get up that high, they won't have they're gonna lose some pressure there. That's that's a high elevation to start with, you know what I mean? Yeah. And climbing up. Yeah, they're gonna to have to look at that for sure. All right. Well, that's something that they'll have to look at. We we can uh, we can uh, look at what they would have for pressure there, you know, normally on our map, on our that map that we have, but then they'll have to figure it out with elevation. Well, and when we find out what they think they're going to pull for the zone for their sprinkler zone, too, we should make them tell us from the model. You know, pay our guys to right. run the model and see what it does to us in that area if they're pulling. Well, let me know because I can ask for that at the meeting. I'll ask for, you know, a, re a review by uh, who we're using now. Tatter and Howard. Tatter and Howard. If we think that's the route we should go, I'll, I'll tell well, them. If that. all we've got feeding that's a six-inch pipe up in that area you know if they don't have enough capacity we might you know might need to run some larger main before you know if they have a fire pump that kicks on if they don't think they're going to put in a storage tank right they might be putting a fire yeah. pump on it sucks the yeah. main dry yeah but they, and they'll need a pump to get that the third story right you might you might want to definitely just bring that up to them that that could be a problem tom and and we're going to we're going to have to have them look at the, have our engineer look at it. Yeah, I'll that. bring that. I'll, 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 I'll make that part of it. They'll have to have Tater and Howard do a, yep. do a, what do you call it? An analysis on our system, how it's going to affect it. And yeah. Yeah. It sounds like uh, they're going to have a tough time getting that much water out of a it's system. It's not a big deal now that we got the that model operation. done. All right. Uh, so anybody got any other new business that we can legally bring up? Because that's the end of the new business. Nope. What, one thing I wanted to bring up um, in that last email that we that Wayne sent around just got remember where he was saying about the billing system isn't aligned, the dates don't align with the um, um, the pump and rec the, um, the, the pump and records to, to the billing records. Kerry's having trouble with yeah. the dates and everything. I think uh, I, I think we and, and I was saying that when we had when we thought we had that big leak. I was saying it's got to be something with the meters or something with the numbers. It it just didn't make sense to me that we could be that losing that much water. And um, I I I would like to have. Um, 
Kerry and Wayne do a little more research and maybe look at another billing system that we can discuss at next meeting. Um, because I, I think that's a lot of our problem is the um, trying to compare the water we pumped to the water we sold uh, just as it matching up and it's the billing system. And the reason why now I'm looking at it, I never really used that billing system. That billing system was brought on as I was retiring. Um, Phyllis brought it on and Kerry ended up working with it. And so I never really ran any reports with it. My reports were all done with the old system. So they always used to match up and I always used to have matching numbers. They were pretty accurate. So I got a feeling that that's where um, a big part of our problem is, is, uh, is in that billing system. So, um, just for discussion for next for next meeting, I think we should start looking at uh, a way of either fixing it or replacing that billing system. All right, anybody? Can we get, can we get any support from that billing system? Technical? Yeah, I, I have um, plenty of support. the The issue is they the reports run on how we bill, like um, on Wayne's. Aunt, uh, annual statistic report, he needs he needs the data pulled from January 1st to December 31st. That's not how we bill. When um, we went quarterly, um, Scott had asked if we could set back, because I think, because we're one month behind the tax bill. And he asked us to do that rather than sending out the tax bill and the water bill. So, because we're, you know, the second month in, and how it tracks is by you know billing cycle. So in order to fix that, we would e we I think we would have to change our billing obviously and send it out when the tax bills got sent out. But I was going back and forth today with uh, the, his name's Michael. He's the one that um, set up our billing thing when we first went over to them. So he is looking into it. He's going to call me tomorrow. We were going back and forth this afternoon. Um, but I'm not, we may, like if it were an option without getting a new billing system, the only, he's gonna see if there's another way, but the only way right now would be to change, like instead of billing February 1st, bill January 1st, and then, you know, three months after that. I, I think we discussed this before, um, Wayne, um, you can't, you read the meters once a month driving around, right? Right, except when we're billing, then we read it during the middle of the month so that it's, you know, it then gives her time to prepare the bill. I see. Uh, but I also, but I looked at the Badger curve when it reads, so you can go into Badger and see the readings and it shows our usage and it's not showing the bell curve that like I, how we pump. So I'll have to talk with them. We might actually have to start reading more often to try to match their curve to our pumping curve because they should all look like a bell in the middle of the summer we're at our you know we're at the peak of the bell and then it drops down on either side and that's not no the but I'm, I, what i'm thinking is uh is there any way of pulling on a monthly basis if if you read them on the same day every month or you let's say you read them near the first or the 30th yeah but month. For the report, I need it broken down though into the categories because you have the commercials, the industrials, I recall. Um, the residents, and that's where the issue lies. I see. Because the badger doesn't recognize those categories. It just knows that it reads, you know, 2,500 meters. And we can go out and read, you know, as many times as we want, but with the billing system, we can only generate charges once one once a cycle, which is a billing cycle. And that's what the issue is. Hmm. So, so what I might have to do is take the billings on either end, because uh, we miss a month on either end. What I might have to do is take those two cycles and then divide it by the number of days so that I can get, so that we're not showing up with large losses when we don't actually have them. And that might be a workaround for this year.
Okay. Well, um, yeah, we gotta we gotta talk to somebody about it. See if we can figure a way of, of getting a cycle here so that our readings and our pumping records jive. Right. Somebody must have something that that makes it. Kerry, maybe you can talk to other towns and just see how they do it. The other people must Yeah, that was my plan anyway. After I hear back from him, I was going to reach out, well, certainly to the town hall to see what Scott's office uses, because um, that was an option in before we <coughs> finalized it with that, uh, who we have now, but she chose to go differently. Okay. All right, anybody else got anything on that subject? Okay, on the old business, um, the uh, hayfield, any, you hear anything or we got a check on that? Nothing. <coughs> I Nothing. can send out another new le another letter uh, requesting him to pay if you want, but I haven't heard, I only sent out that one letter and I never heard. Okay. Uh, yeah, why don't you send him another letter and Send him a bill for it. What, what did we do? We cut that bill down, didn't we? We gave him a break on it. Yes. Yeah. So just give him the give him the new uh, the new amount. Wayne, do you have any updates on well replacement? So they're planning to begin in January, sometime like mid to late January. They want to start drilling. Okay. So they are moving forward. <coughs> have they got the spot and everything all picked out? Yeah, when they did all their tests, yeah, they have the spot. It's all marked out there. How far is it from the other well? It's uh, not very far. I think it's 20 or 25 feet away. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, they, they say that's supposed to be within 50, is it? Yeah, I believe there is a measure. Okay. Anybody got any, any other questions for women on that subject? No. Nope. Update on water permit? No, so it's just still, we're waiting. It's in the review process now. I didn't see anything outstanding that they didn't change anything and we were pretty much compliant with everything and all of their requirements. So we're just waiting through the review period what about our, our, our engineer? <coughs> What's happening with them? Um, what do you mean? Well, we haven't heard from him. You mean Patrick? Yeah. Well, I got a happy <laughs> Christmas, so I did email him back, but every time I ask, they won't talk. So I don't know what happened, but they won't say anything. How about the new water source? Um, so that's still tabled while we're waiting on the permit. All right. Um, asset management grant. So they're still working on the piping part of the system and they've requested more data. They're looking for ages of pipes. So I have to go through that and try to find you know, dates for different streets and stuff. All right, so you're working on it? Yeah. Anybody got any questions on that for me? No. As long as this, they are actually progressing and they're <clears throat> co coordinating with you. Yeah. It's just like these next two weeks are kind of a loss. And yep. adding to that, I'm going to have another round of PFAS sampling next week so yep yeah that's next on the list i saw the uh the uh, bad results yeah so they actually asked if we need manly street because it it's really at the top of the the chart there 20 is the number and manly street came in at um i think it's 19.8 for the finished water which they found odd but it could just be the the filters are built up with it. So we've been air scouring and Monday when we go in, we'll see how the next round turns out. But the raw water had it too. 
Yeah, it was like 19.1 and 19 point something, but the they were puzzled because the finished was actually higher, but it, it could yeah, be that it's just, that it might be just built up in the filter beds. Okay, what was it? <clears throat> Some of the other wells. Um... So 10 is the number that triggers more sampling. So all of the other, the highest I think was um, either Norman or station one was six. And then after that, they were all in the threes or twos. So they were lower. So they're under 10. So they don't require additional sampling, but Manly Street is gonna put us on quarterly, if not monthly sampling for it from this point forward. Hmm. So, it looks pretty good on the other wells. Yeah, it's under the 10, so yep. All right, and that, so, yeah, that, but that doesn't make sense that you'd have it higher on the on the finished water than you would on the raw water. Right. And we built up in the filters maybe, huh? Yeah. Right. So that, we'll see when I do, it's like this, that's why the, the second round is called the confirmation round, just to make sure. Would that catch in the, uh, Wait a minute. There's a bed of um, carbon in there, isn't it? I'm not sure if there's carbon in it, but the, if there is, it's not working to remove anything because it didn't drop the number any. And basically, carbon is what they use to extract it. Right, and that's why I'm wondering if it if it did extract it and it saturated the carbon because if they use carbon to catch it, and we got a layer of carbon in there, it could be the carbon could be loaded up with it. Yeah. That's maybe where we're getting it is, you know, it's leaching out of it because it's full. Right, and we won't know until, like the next round of um, grants the, had to be submitted, I think just after Christmas. So they're not gonna even talk to us until they see the second round and see what the number is, if they stay the same or they reduce any. Okay. And I don't think Manly Street's gonna drop down below 10 when it's at 19. Right. So, so is the confirmation one all of them or just Manly Street? No, I'm saying I have to sample all of them. Because the letter she sent said you only have to do that when you hit that MMCL. Yeah, and they and we really so they're not went, going by that. Right. No, nope, they want us to sample all of them. All right. Huh. But no just... chance that Manly Street finished and one of the raw water ones got mixed up. No, I did it and it's it's painstaking because you have to turn off one well and you've got to run it to waste while you're doing it because you can't you can't turn the plant down and tune it in for one well. So it yeah, trust me, it I label everything before the day before I go out to all the bottles so there's no confusion once I get out there and I try to keep it all separated and that's not a fun day. That's gotta be pretty hot when because you're pumping that water all the way from, you know, yeah. a 500 feet down the street or more, then down the driveway, and that's an eight inch main. You must be running that for hours before you can take a sample. Yeah, I have to wait a water. long time. So I try to get one run in and I come like, station two is the easiest because there's only one well. All the others are all combined. Yeah, because that's that's a ways. Uh, our well is a long ways from the treatment plant. Yep. That could be why both wells are testing the same. Because you you you, you know it take a long time to get that much water all the way out of that pipe. You know because you got dilution first. You're not yeah, gonna move all the water 100 percent out. Right. Yeah, that's that's tough. They're not gonna get a real clear um sample unless you did it like ran one well one day and then the second well another day, you know, that would be closer. But I would I can't imagine you could even do it in an hour, you know. No, it, so, it, like I said, I set one up and then I go off and do the others and and in the meantime, it's just basically running to waste while it's happening. Huh. Yeah, you better explain to them how far it is. That we, that's a kind of a unique situation there. That, yeah. The, 
the wells are so much further away from the pumping station. They may not realize that. Is there any way in those buildings we could set, if we have to do this ongoing, you could set up a sample tap in the well yeah, we, station? Yeah, we could probably do put two sample taps on each well down there somewhere. Yeah, just to, that way you just have to go in and we have a live sample we? while it's running. Wait, don't we have those? No, no not in... Not down there. The electrical building has no water in it at all now. No, okay. And it's a slab too. So there's no way without jackhammering and tunneling under to get anything up into it. Oh yeah. The, the, the well on we added, that doesn't come in the building at all. Just that one pipe comes in where they they're both joined together where it comes into the building, right? Yeah, well, nothing comes into the electrical building, but yeah, they're joined together when they go up in um, mainly the plant itself. Oh, they don't go through the building anymore where the meter was there? No, we yeah. went around the building. No, oh, yeah. they go around the building. Okay. Uh, anything else on that subject? All right. How about the laborers' position? Anything on that, Wayne? You've been... I don't like any of the candidates. I I understand each time I go out, but I shouldn't have to force myself to look through to nitpick and find something good in 180 plus resumes. You know, there wasn't anybody that stood out. Tom had two people, I guess, that he thought could do it. I just. They were the best two I could find out of 180. <laughs> See what you think. I don't know. Nothing that really, really stood out, but. All right. Did you pick any, Wayne? Not even one that was a consider? I put question. I mean, I don't, none of them really stand out. I mean, I have a pile of them that if I, if you guys tell me then, and I'm forced to use that, this go around, then I have, there's probably about 15 that I've put question, you know, I've checked off and pulled to the side. I mean, you know, it might've been one that looked good, but he lived far away. Uh, there was just- Right, you know. and that's basically what happened. I, I mean, I looked for keywords that they would say anything electrical, anything mechanical. Uh, did you look, you looked through them, didn't you? Did you? Yeah, I had the same kind of a list. There's a bunch that, I don't know, I think I came up with eight that had some stuff, you know, Nothing perfect, but that might be worth talking to type of thing. Not, you know, because at some point we either have to sort of rethink how we're doing this or we got to at least talk to some of these people. I mean, that's doesn't mean you hire them, but at least if we have a few, we get together, talk about them. And, you know, Wayne's the one that's got to work with them, train them, especially this is more of, trying to deal with the um the stuff around the plants and all so you know it's got to be someone wayne's comfortable with yeah i don't want to hire somebody just to hire somebody i you know want to make sure that it's somebody that we could use you know yep i mean i can't say a lot but, but i mean i do a lot and we have a lot of electrical work that needs to occur and i'm really looking for somebody that's knowledgeable in that end of it is that is that would our wages be compatible with uh, somebody with that would do electrical work? Oh, we won't get an electrician, no, because they, they make prevailing rate wages. They make more than my entire crew when they come on a site <laughs> per hour. It's yeah, no, we'll never achieve like a a journeyman or a master electrician. But if anybody who knows what they're doing is better than somebody who knows how to wield a spatula and a ladle spoon driving uber yeah <laughs> uh, okay discussion on the main office generator so we're budget wise i know the last time it was probably about four or five years ago i noticed the thing surge but we didn't have the electronics of a vfd involved and um, I know it came up at around 10 grand, but I'm trying to watch our dollars and cents now because until I see that February commitment, I don't know 
the February commit, if it comes in with what should have been on the last commitment, then we'll all be all set budget wise. But if it doesn't, we're not going to match our budget. We won't, we won't commit to bring in as much money as we have on our budget. So if I don't spend over that, then we don't trigger DOR again. So I, I don't want to call them and get all prices and then I can't afford to do it. If, if we get through the February commitment and everything looks good, then I can go and call them and then we'll go on it. But the alarm company calls me when we have a power outage so I can just send call somebody in and go down and make sure everything came back up and is running fine. But I know the last time station one went out, it phased, it went out for phase on both of the drives. So I don't know whether that was the generator or when the power tripped itself. Because I know it took two legs out on the pole because I could see them out. So it might have phased as it went out instead of the generator doing it. So you have a workaround until you get, we see the February commitment and you feel better about the numbers. Yeah, I'd feel better because I don't want to trigger DOR because that would be two years back to back. They'll be all over us after that. So I'd rather wait and see what happens to make sure that I don't overspend. I mean, I know chemical wise looking at it, I think we've spent almost $50,000 in our chemical line, which is 120. So I know there's, there's room there to thing and we haven't filled two positions that were budgeted for either. So right there is probably about $200,000. So I think we're okay. I just don't, I don't want to trigger DOR again. Right. I will look at it um, after February. And I, like I said, the alarm company calls me when we have power outages. So I, you know, I'll have a feel for when I need to send somebody in just to look at it or I can run down myself. So, it, it, so you're manually turning it on. Is that what you're doing? No, it'll come on automatically, but I just want somebody to go in and make sure that that it, it's running okay. Cause I, if it runs okay, I think the VFDs would be better on it than would be station four, which is just two large drives running full bore where the VFDs are a slower drawer and they, it's, it's a different kind of drawer on it. I think it's smoother. Okay. Well, that, um, that generator really doesn't have that many hours on it. You know, it's old, it's right. old, it's 30, 40 years old, but hour wise it doesn't run that much right but they have more sensitive they're more sensitive in what they do with the electronics that are involved in today's i mean when that thing went in you wouldn't expect a computer in every desk and the electronics that we use today things changed a lot even cell phones came about even cell phones are what uh, well the technology advanced since that generator came along and especially with the finer electronics. And I don't know, they maybe might be looking at retrofitting how it de deals with it, but we'll see. If the next time we have a power outage, I'll try to run station one and see how it reacts with it. Okay. Uh, what's going on with the uh, Walnut Street tank? So I, I'm playing phone tag with the, the guy who's the committee there. I haven't gotten to him yet. And now there's snow all over the ground. so. But I mean, until something happens, if even if I flush the line, eventually we're going to fail again. And I don't want to fail and hit a uh, level two. I did ask the engineers to give me a quote, and I'll have to um, get on their case that they never got back to me a quote on looking at how we'd modify that. But I know the answer is going to be putting altitude valves on the, the North Elm Street tanks to force the Walnut Street tank to fill. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna have to too. And I, if I remember right, that was somewhere around eight hundred thousand dollars for that to occur. Yeah, that that just seems way off, though. If that's what all they, you know, part of it is because of how we want to do it too, bringing them up into a building and everything right, and else so adds a lot. But that's even so, that just seemed like an awful lot of money for what needs to be done there. And we put the altitude valve in, in the Walnut Street tank. We should have put it up at the other tank. There is one in Walnut Street? 
Yeah. Yeah, it's it's there. But it's wide open. Yeah, because it never it would be the last one to always fill. Yeah. We, they thought it was going to go the other way around. They thought that that one was would overflow first, so we needed an altitude valve. So we put it in. You know, they built it into the into the tank, but we couldn't get any water to go halfway up the tank. We had to open that valve all the way up. We had to keep cranking it open until we had it all the way open, and it wasn't doing anything. And then we still couldn't fill the tank. Is it a problem with the altitude valve at Walnut Street? No, it's not. No, it's just like an open pipe right now. Because the altitude valve would keep water from going in. It would shut right. it would shut the water flow off at a certain elevation. Not it won't increase the, the level of the water in the tank. It'll it would decrease it. And that's the problem we're having. We're not able to fill it. So is it decreasing it too much? Yep, yeah, yeah, but it's um, it's fully open. The valve is fully open, so so it's not decreasing. It's no longer decreasing it at, at all. Where they thought the setting should be, we only got a little bit in the tank, and we had it. They said, "Well, I'll just adjust it open a little more." We adjusted it open a little more. We got some more in the tank, and then we said, "Well, the tank isn't anywhere near full." We opened it some more. And then finally, we got it fully open, and then the the tank on uh, Spring Street overflowed. So, realizing that then that the um, didn't need an altitude valve there, that was doing nothing. The altitude valves needed at the other end. They built that tank too too tall. That's definitely it. It's uh, it's ninety feet, and the other one's one hundred and six. They thought that that uh, 16 foot difference was the difference in the height, but it's gotta be a quite a bit more than that. It's gotta be a, like 20 or 30 feet difference. So, I think they were using the elevation that the state has on the bridge itself. That there's a, there's a marker there that says that that's the highest elevation of West Bridgewater, right on that bridge going over, um, 24. Yeah, but they should have run that survey across to tie that stuff together, though, if they, before they set yeah, I wouldn't think they'd just thing. go by one point. I would think that they'd be doing a double check somewhere. Just not, not enough pipe capacity in between the two sets of tanks. Well, that tank's so far from the wells, that's the problem, probably, right? And you got to push most of that water past the North Elm Street tanks. They're going to see the. They're going to get the water first from down right. at the station. Except for when Wal um, Manly Street's running, that's going right up the street to, toward the Walnut Street tank. Well, it is, but it also ties into the rest. It's not like it's isolated. It's pushing back against the rest of the system. Yeah, it's a funny. Oh, yeah. You're still going to fill the other tanks first. The model we had done should they should be able to run that model and tell us what's going on. Yeah, it's a funny thing when we had when we brought Manly back on after the wells were rehabbed and it came back on, but it went south and it was running at night. The way Manly Street actually flows is it goes out to West Center Street and heads down West Street because that's where all of our complaints came from. Nothing. We didn't get any water quality complaints heading up Manly Street. It all went out towards the Shell Station and, the, you know, the old Charlie Horse uh, Barrett's now. And then it went down and then it went into um, the, the other development behind Dunkin' Donuts there, Copper Beach. That's where the water actually went. It makes Manly sense. There's no use on Manly Street. There's, that whole right. end of town, there isn't a lot of water usage. You can see the flow patterns when you throw out some dirty water because you can tell where you get your complaints from. But Wayne, maybe... Maybe there's a gate closed on Manly Street from your going down Manly Street from your pumping station to that intersection at Western Manly. You you may not because those don't forget we got reverse gates. Yeah. Um, you might have a gate closed there if it's going down West Street because that that's pushing it through a smaller main. 
I don't know why we'd be going through a six inch main over the bridge. And yeah, I don't I know they operate all of those gates as part of the flushing program down at the intersection of West and um, Manly. Because I, I know that that at the intersection there when that we run that hydrant, that hydrant used to give you so much water, the, the whole intersection used to shake when we ran that. Um, yeah. Because that's tied right to the 16 inch main, the 12, and the 12 inch comes down Manly Street. I mean, the amount of water that's in that intersection is just huge. And if you shut off the, the line coming down Manly Street from the tank and the one coming over the bridge on West Street, and you ran that hydrant, it'd be interesting to see how much water you're really getting coming down Manly Street from their pumping station. You may not, you may have, it would tell you really quick if you shut it off, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, where Doc Berry's place is, find the gate right in there, uh, the mini mobile, you shut off a gate there, and then one on the, on the bridge going over 24, open that hydrant, and that water would have to come down Manly Street from the uh, pumping station. And if you're not really getting the water screaming through there, something's wrong. You, you might have a gate close. Yeah, I mean, when we've operated them, they all sound because they, they, they squeak shut and they thud, they thud open. So yeah. you can, it's right. not hard to tell when they're in the wrong Those position. are butterflies, aren't they? Um, on the 16 is butterflies, yeah. No, I thought the 12s were too. No. No, no they're uh, 36 hand turns. Okay. Um, let's see, discussion on the commitments. So, I mean, so I sent you the email and showed you how budget-wise we're barely going to get in there. The good thing is that the, the 40B on um, Scotland Street paid his tie-in fees, so that kind of helped a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think we can make it through without triggering DOR again. And hopefully the, the, the 15 or 20 days that are missing gets made up and that's, you know, our revenue comes up again. All right, what which 40B was that that paid? Uh the Scotland Street. He paid for the first phase. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Buy in. Okay. Yeah. How much was that, Wayne? Um ballpark. Can't read it. Well, it looks like 7,500. I think that was 31. No, that's not it. I think it was 52.5, wasn't it, Wayne? Yeah, there was, I don't even see it in here. I just don't have it at my hands because it's behind my desk. Yeah, I don't, doesn't look like 50, it's on my cheek, but it was like, yeah. It was a good chunk of change. Now, how much yep. do you think it was, Kerry? I think it was 52,500. Okay. I'm like almost like 99% positive. And that's not including the individual tie-ins to the? No. No, that's still to come. And they haven't Dutch done much more down there than other than they did the tie-ins. Then I'm not sure what else they're doing in there right now. Oh, they've already tied in? Yeah, they did the two tie-ins. Oh, they did? Okay. All right. Anybody got anything else we can discuss here at Legally at the meeting? The only I other just thing want, oh, sorry, Wayne. No, go ahead. I just wanted to, I did the um, water liens for the year. Oh, yeah, for the for the year and the total is 124,238.49. Is that up from other years or? No. Same? Yeah. Hmm. Is, uh, is the um, money coming in on the Old water liens, all right. 
it, does, it doesn't matter if we bring out 124 from last year's and you put 124 on, at least you're even. But if they're not paying last year's, it makes a difference. I'll get the report for the next meeting for what we collected this year on last year's. Yeah, Scott does that. I don't do that. People out of work and stuff that, you know, whether we're staying even with the amount of, or uh, we're getting further behind, you know. We get a good chunk of it in January um, for anybody that has a mortgage because it comes right out of their mortgage. But anybody that owns, um, that's where we don't really collect. But I'll get a report for the next meeting. Okay. Wayne, you started to say something? Early. Yeah, so that, that subdivision that's trying to go in in Brock, West Bridge, Brockton, but it's yep. West Bridgewater. So they they did speak with Tatter and Howard, but they wouldn't, they didn't pay. They wouldn't pay either. They just wanted him to give him a ballpark number and you know, Tatter and Howe wouldn't do that because then they're on the hook. And the last thing that I think I read, I think they're looking to tie into Brockton. I think they may get approved to tie in to Brockton. I mean, if, if they tie into Brockton, we really shouldn't have anything to do with that subdivision then. That should all become Brockton's problem because we don't make any money off of it. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, yeah, that would, that shouldn't be us. Right. But I just, you know, it, it's still moving through its things, but at some point we may want to get that across to them that, you know, it's, you know, if they tie into Brockton, I mean, that's good for them, but we shouldn't be in there servicing any pipes or houses or anything because it, we don't, it doesn't fund us. Then the residents would be subsidized in that subdivision. <laughs> But with, we could put meters in the houses and get get the water revenue from it, right? Yeah, but then we'd have to pay Brockton. So basically, it's coming in and going right back out. Who's going to do the water repairs in the street? Yeah, see, that's what I'm trying not to. I mean, if we're not making any money, why do we want to be repairing or fixing anything in there? There's going to have to be an intermunicipal agreement somewhere along the line. Right. It's just a thought as we move, as that thing moves forward, because they're not going away. They're still... They've been fighting this thing for almost 10 years now, I guess. Yeah, that's a that's a loser proposition for us. We'll end up servicing the, the accounts and giving Brockton the money. Right. It's just a thought. It came to my mind, and I didn't want to let it escape without bringing it up. Because it looked like there may be three things happening in there. And, you know, it's just not – it could be – well over a hundred houses in there when they're finally done and everybody jumps into it. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's not that's not good. All right, anybody got anything else? Nope. Uh, nope. Nope. What's our next meeting, Curry? January. I thought it was like the sixth. Yeah, first Monday's the first, right? No, fourth. Yeah, it looks like the, the well, the fourth would be the first Monday. So that's good with everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Good with you, Art? Yeah, that's fine by me. Okay. So January 4th is the next meeting. So do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.